G'day guys. All right, we are in the third video of the um, Mantle Clock series. Uh, and we, I think in this one I said we're going to do the side pieces. So this, the right side, uh, the left side and right side, like we can see here. Um, the reason in this, um, like you can see in the top and base drawing here, we've got one drawing, but we, we're making two pieces. Uh, that's because the two pieces are exactly identical. However, um, and same here, the plinth front and back, the front and the back piece are exactly identical. However, in the sides, you can see here, we've got um, the front here, uh, and then we've got a housing joint, a little groove down here, and we've got a groove there, but on the right side, we've got the groove on the other side. These are actually sort of mirror opposites. They're not exactly identical. They're kind of a mirror of one another. That's why they have to be, like they are exactly identical in terms of dimensions, but the mirror opposites of each other because one's got to go on the left one's got to go on the right if we just made two of these it um yeah it wouldn't work out which we may see later when we draw them um so for starters we can see we've got a piece of timber and it's 100 millimeters wide and it's 19 millimeters thick so we can probably just get started drawing that straight under here uh, it doesn't matter where we draw it for now we can fix it up later so we'll go 100 comma 19 I'm going to push it up uh, all the way to there, which should be, I'll type in 400 just to be safe. 400. Okay, so there's that piece in. Now, um, let's have a look. We'll make, so this one is on the left, so we need to be looking at the left side drawing. Um, and actually, you know what, for now, it might, be, it might get a little bit tricky trying to draw it in here because we may need to access the top face, which we can't see right now. Um, so we might move it out of the way once we make it a component. So let's triple click, right click, make component, call this left, oops, left side, create, and we'll grab the move tool and we'll just move it over here for now while we put all the, um, put all the things in. So I reckon let's double click. Let's start off with this housing joint. It's a 9.5 millimeter deep housing. It's 19 millimeters wide. And it goes, uh, it's, it's, sorry, it's 300 millimeters from the top. Okay, so that's, that should be pretty easy. We go, we measure 300 millimeters down from the top. We measure 19 millimeters down from there. And we measure 9.5 millimeters in. And we can draw a rectangle from there to there. Okay, so we're going to push that all the way through. Um, now, uh, one thing that I didn't do in this drawing, which I probably should have, is you see how there's the groove here, right down the middle. That groove is for this piece here, the clock mounting board to slide in. It's a three millimeter piece of plywood. That's where we actually mount the clock face and that's where the pendulum swings. And you might be able to see that uh, in the exploded view or here. Yeah, that clock mounting board has to go in. When, but when we actually make this piece, uh, when we actually make it in the workshop, your teacher is going to run this piece of timber through the table saw and give you a three millimeter groove all the way down your piece of timber. So it's not actually going to stop at the housing joint. It'll go all the way through, right? I didn't draw it on there originally because I thought we might do it. <clears throat> I thought we might do it with a router and um, set up with a three millimeter cutter and cut just from there to there. But it just goes a lot quicker if um, if the teacher runs it through the table saw for you. So it might be a good idea to draw it properly just like we would do it in the workshop so let's see we've got a three millimeter wide groove and it's 51 millimeters from the front edge so we grab the tape measure we measure 51 millimeters in from here and then we're going to put in a three millimeter groove and it's going to be 9.5 deep so it just it runs at the same depth as the housing joint uh let's see um, rectangle here to there. We want to go, oh, come on, there we go. Uh, we want to go 9.5 comma 3. There we go. And we're going to push this all the way through down to the bottom, just like that. Okay. Um, and we also need to put a groove on the back, like you can see there. And that groove is six millimeters um, wide because we're going to be using a six millimeter piece of plywood and it's going to go in nine millimeters. Okay, so we need it to be six millimeters 
along this way because it's six millimeter thick piece of ply and it goes nine millimeters along that way. We can put the rectangle in here to here and push that all the way down. Okay, so there's the groove. Oops. There's the groove for our backing board. Here's the groove for our clock mounting board. And now all we need to do <coughs> is put the housing joint in. I think though we're going to have a problem. It's going to stop here if we do it this way, which I'm not a fan of. Um, so we, it might be easier if we draw a pencil line straight across on the face, straight across on the face, and we push that down to there, double click that, and then we can just use the eraser to remove those lines that we don't want, uh, that one and that one. Whoops, hang on, that didn't do what we wanted. Yeah, this one didn't go far enough down. Um, erase that, and hmm, we got a little step there. I think maybe the, yeah, this one might. Could, normally we go if we're doing like a little rebate or whatever like that in a piece of nineteen millimeter timber, it would be nine point five millimeters in, not nine. So I reckon if we push this one in, it's just going to be point five mil to this face. Yeah, point five. So it must it must be nine point five, not nine. So that's my mistake for not putting that on the drawing, apologies. Um, okay, so that groove is nice and clean at the top. Let's just check around the housing joint. Yep, nice and clean. Okay, perfect. So that is the left side done. So I can leave that, I can edit, delete guides. Now you notice, if I were to just make a copy of this, if I press control, make a copy, and move it to the other side, if I flip it around, uh, where's my little node? There we go. Flip it around 180 degrees. It doesn't work because, see now this groove is on the front, whereas we, we would need it on the back. And also this dimension is going to be off. We can't just make an, <clears throat> an exact identical piece. We need to draw the mirror sort of reversed um, version of it. So we can just go straight ahead and delete this. And we're just going to have to draw another one, which, you know, it's not going to take all that long. Um, let's have a look. We'll get the rectangle tool, which should be really quick because we've already done it once. We need to go, it needs to be 100 by 19. Push it up, 400 mil. Perfect. We're going to triple click, one, two, three, make component, and call this one the right side. So, okay. We move it away. Now, double click on it with the pointer tool or the select tool, and let's get all these um, let's get all this joinery in. So we go from the top, we go down 300 millimeters, go down a further 19. We can pencil those lines across. Uh, actually, I might save that because this it'll get in the way of this one. From the front, what was it? 51 millimeters in. 51 yep 51 we need to draw a little rectangle in that is 9.5 by 3 there we go and a rectangle here that is 9.5 by 6 okay so there's those two joins we can push those all the way through down to the bottom double click that to do the same perfect get our pencil line Draw those across like that. Get the eraser. Oh no, sorry. Uh, yeah, I get the eraser now actually. Whoops, control Z. That one and that one. Okay, now I can push that in. It should offset me. Yeah, limited to 9.5. Okay, perfect. And I can erase that and erase that. And that is that piece perfectly done. Okay, so <clears throat> let's leave that. We'll go edit, delete guides. Now we need to put them in the right position now, which may be a little bit tricky. Um, or there might be a way we can sort of um, figure out how far apart they have to be. Because we can see this piece number here, what's it? Number 11, the shelf, is going to go into those housing joints. So if we figure out the length of the shelf, that's drawing 11, that's 260 millimeters. So from here to here, they need to be 260 millimeters apart. So if we go here, measure 260, that's where this piece needs to be. 
So we can grab that top corner of that housing joint, move it to there, and that's exactly how far apart these two pieces need to be. Now, to get it in the actual position on the on top of the base here where it needs to go, I think we'll probably need to do a bit of maths, which some of you might not be very happy about, but it's okay. Um, we need to measure from outside to outside. That's a gap of 279. Oh, how good is that? 279. That makes things nice and easy. <clears throat> um, okay, let's measure from here to here. And what have we got? I bet it's a funny number as well. 362. Oh, God, I don't want to do the math on that. Uh, actually, I can hover over that midpoint like that, and it tells me it's 181. So 181 is the center. Then if we figure out half of 279, if we figure out half of that and measure that way across, we could move these two pieces there and it would be in the perfect position. So uh, how am I going to figure out half of 279? That's a, that's a bit of math, isn't it? Um, half of 280 would be 140. So then there's, um, there's one millimeter difference, so half a millimeter. So it would be 139.5, I think. <laughs> Let's see, 139.5 out that way, 139.5 out that way. If I measure between there and there, 279, bang on, Mr. Madrich, you are a gun. All right, so if I click that, hold down shift, click that, I can move these two at the same time over to here, bang. And that is in the exact position it needs to be in. Okay, perfectly centered. We should be able to measure the gap from here to here, and it'd be the same on the other side. 41.5 and 41.5. Okay, perfect. So we'll quickly just paint these. There we go. And that's starting to look like a mantle clock, isn't it? Okay, so um, let's see. Well, I think in the last video I forgot to tell you to save it. Just make sure you save your work as you go so you don't lose anything. Uh, we can edit, delete our guides now. And in the next video, we might, I think we'll put the shelf in and the backing board. They might be the next two. And maybe the clock mounting board if we get time. Okay, anyways, see you in the next video.